And um, many of you sent me this story. Many of you. So, uh, of course, it uh, doesn't even matter, frankly, if I'm interested in a particular story. If dozens and dozens of you write in and attach a particular story, we are going to talk about it. Because it's really all about you, isn't it? It's all about you. Now, we have the first version of this story, and then we have the response to it. But many of you uh, have heard this story, and if you haven't, you're going to enjoy it anyway. <laughs> Believe me. Here it is. Dateline San Diego. Of course, Dateline San Diego, but you would have to be uh, either a uh, satellite television subscriber like myself, or you would have to be watching television in the New York metropolitan area to even know this happened. But here it is, Dateline San Diego. New York Mets broadcaster Keith Hernandez's comment that women, quote, don't belong in the dugout. Drew criticism Sunday from San Diego Padres manager Bruce Bochy, who supported the female member of his training staff and said he was surprised her gender even came up. Hernandez made the remark during the second inning of New York's 8-1 victory in San Diego on Saturday night. Mike Piazza, homered for the Padres, exchanged a high five in the dugout with 33-year-old Kelly Calabrese, Padres massage therapist. Now here's what Keith Hernandez said. <laughs> he said, who is the girl in the dugout with the long hair? What's going on here? You have got to be kidding me. Only player personnel in the dugout. Later in the broadcast, it says here, Hernandez found out that Calabrese was with the Padres training staff. And here's what he said. He said, I won't say that women belong in the kitchen. But they don't belong in the dugout. See, Keith, I would have said they do belong in the kitchen. And in front of that ironing board. But, uh, you know, New York is so politically correct, he couldn't get away with saying that. Hernandez, a former Mets first baseman and Seinfeld guest star, then laughed and said, you know, I'm only teasing. <laughs> I, love, I love what he said to try to dig himself out of this hole he thought he was in. He says, uh, you know, I'm only teasing. I love you gals out there. Always have. See, that's the kind of thing I would say is a joke. Keith Hernandez really thought he was getting himself out of a jam by saying that. I mean, if he intended to say that to be funny, I think it's hysterical. I just love it. I'd say I love you gals out there, and uh, make sure dinner's home uh, ready and uh, uh, when I get home. <laughs> Says here, Bochy said before San Diego's 7-4 win over New York on Sunday that he did not hear what Hernandez said, but was told about it and was not amused. Bochy said, Kelly is part of this ball club. She's a part of the training staff. I don't know the actual comments, I just heard about it, but she's been here for a while and played a major role with this club in getting guys ready to play a ball game. Judging from the Padres' one loss record the last few years, I wouldn't be bragging about that, Bruce. <clears throat> Calabrese told NBC station KSND-TV that she was upset at first about the comments, but that she quickly got over it. I was in awe that somebody of that caliber would say something like that with such a huge audience at stake. She said of Hernandez, well, stop right there, darling. How many broads are watching baseball on TV anyway? You know, why should a guy do it a broadcast to an audience primarily of guys have to worry about whether he offended women? They're not in the target demographic. This is something we deal with every day. And if a male wants to tell a joke that's funny to males, 
Or if a male wants to express a point of view that the primarily male audience enjoys hearing, why should he be censured or, or feel he has to be politically correct? You know, the way we do this show here, the audience is primarily men. We don't really care if women are offended by what we do. You know, I talk about the pussification of sports all the time. Here's a perfect example of it. I don't know if Keith was serious or not, and frankly, I don't care. If that's his opinion, he's entitled to it, and it shouldn't be a controversy. And any broad who doesn't like it, guess what? The audience isn't broads. The people watching the game are guys. With a few long-suffering wives sitting by their side, waiting for the game to be over. When's he going to be over? Is he over yet? When's he going to be over? Come on, we've already watched six innings. and there it is. How many innings are there? When's he going to be over? Why should Keith Hernandez give a rat's ass if women are offended? Who cares? Who cares? She went on to say about Keith Hernandez, this is uh, the, the woman in the dugout, Kelly Calabrese. She said, it's a little shocking, but you know what? It happens. He not only discredited me as a person, but he discredited women. If we could turn something that's obviously such a negative into a positive, then hopefully something good will have come out of this. Calabrese then walked down the hallway to the Padres training room and joked, should I go in the kitchen now? Damn straight you should. Hernandez had no comment after the game, but said during the second inning of the broadcast on Sunday that he was sorry if he offended anyone. Oh, boy. Was there a gun to his head when he said that? He has nothing to be sorry about. I don't care if he was serious or telling a joke. He has nothing to be sorry about. Sports on television, with the exception of things like figure skating, which isn't even a sport, and, 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 and women's tennis are primarily viewed by men. Why should the guys doing the game have to worry about whether they're offending women? The guys watching the game probably enjoyed Keith Hernandez's comments. I don't think he should have to apologize, and I don't think there's a controversy here. Do you? Tom Likas. Come on! 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. How are you today? Do you care? Yes, I do, because I don't want you to rip me a new one, because I don't agree with you on what you say. The Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Steve on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? I'm doing Okay. Hey, you know, I just wanted to say that I think it's pretty sad that these guys that are hired to do color commentary can't even give color commentary. They can't be colorful. Yeah, that's the whole reason why they're hired. And it just drives me crazy. Uh, you know, uh, this is one of the reasons why so many sports broadcasts these days are just simply boring. Exactly. Um, I think they should let them voice their opinions, and it makes the game more fun. Uh, let's face it, it's a game, and it's a game for guys. Exactly, and you don't have to agree with it, just I wish they could voice their opinion. So I'll tell you what, if I were running the broadcast department for a Major League Baseball team, what I want is people tuning in. Exactly. Now, in Canada, you have a, uh, a hockey uh, commentator named Don Cherry, who has been on a TV show called Hockey Night in Canada for, I think it's been over ten years now. And uh, he's a former coach, and he makes outrageous comments. He appears between periods of hockey games broadcast on the CBC. Uh, many times uh, the CBC has apologized, or many times uh, it's caused a, a huge uproar. He's made comments about Eastern European players not being as tough as French-Canadian players or American players. He has made comments about uh, uh, guys of certain ethnicities. He's made comments about fighters and why isn't there more fighting. He's in favor of fighting. All of this stuff stirs up the pot and makes it more interesting to tune in. 
Yeah, exactly. I wish there was more of that in baseball. I mean, <laughs> you know, somebody like Vin Scully, who's been doing it for years, <laughs> he's one of the greatest of all time. Right. And what makes him so interesting is he talks about things that are just different, things that you don't always know about the players or the game or the team. Right. Vin is never going to make an outrageous comment, no. but he's so good at what he does. He's so far and away the best. When you get below the level of Vin Scully, you get these, we call them in the radio business, pukers. Wow, that's ball one. Hey, coming up, beach town that, everybody. Uh, that, that yeah, I, I mean, I don't care if you're listening to uh, uh, the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim or uh, I don't care if you're listening to the Milwaukee Brewers. It's nothing but a bunch of yuckers and pukers who get on there. They, have, they add nothing to the game at all except a bunch of... Ah! And, and I would much rather hear somebody making outrageous comments or having fun or making jokes. It would make it more interesting to watch. Yeah, that's true, and that's why there's two of them. One of them calls a play-by-play, -play, and the other one offers the color commentary. But, I mean, why have more than one person if if they're both just going to sit there and recite what happened in the game? And who cares about being politically correct when it comes to women? Yeah. Now, granted, I would not want a, a guy doing a Major League Baseball game who makes racist comments, but, but let's face it, the primary audience is guys, guys of all colors. What would be wrong with having the color commentator make outrageous remarks that might offend women. So what? Yeah, I agree. Thank you, Steve. All right, take me out tribal style, punk Tom. African tribal style. Here you go. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's Kristen on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom. Hey. I don't understand your last comment about how come it's okay to be racist or not okay to be racist. But uh, because people of all colors watch baseball, and you don't want to offend the target audience. Okay, but what if it was a white television show? Are they allowed to be racist because mo majority? Well, of first of all, you are allowed to be anything you want. Last I looked, God bless America. And you know, I'm not offended by his comment. I'm truly not. But I just don't understand why you should be politically correct with other minorities. But not well, I'm not suggesting political correctness. I am suggesting uh, doing a program, or in this case, providing commentary that appeals to your target audience, and not to worry about people who are not the target audience. But there are people, maybe they're not your prime target audience, but there are still women that are interested in baseball. Uh, but the point is, they're not the target audience. Just like our show is not targeted to women, and I frequently say things that are offensive to women. I really don't care. Right, but and I'm, I don't care that you say things that are offensive to women. I don't care that Keith Hernandez says things that are offensive to women, but it's not okay to any other minority to be that offensive. I wouldn't, no, I'm not saying whether it's okay or not okay. I wouldn't recommend it because men of all colors watch done. baseball. How many times do I have to say the same thing? No, I hear what you're saying, but I'm saying it's not done for any other minorities. It's politically incorrect and it's not done. But, but, but the best reason not to do it is not the reason you think. The best reason not to do it is because you'd be offending the core audience. But there are certain things that the core audience is not african-american people or asian people or something like that and they still don't go around bashing them actually uh, if you've ever watched bet or other channels like that uh... there are frequently comments made that you might find offensive if you're caucasian right, well african-american people are able to get away with it but, but that's <laughs> my that's my point i'm uh, what i'm saying is what i am advocating is that uh... and i don't care what color people are whatever you make comments that are interesting to your target audience by the way, if BET is doing that and that helps them uh, raise their own ratings, I say go for it. I guess so. I don't know. I mean, we're in the audience gathering business. We're not in the political correctness business. Right. We should. Those of us who are in a position to, to have opinions and make comments should should make the kinds of comments that attract an audience, which I am all about. But I Great. don't understand why it goes one way and not the other. I didn't say it goes one way and not the other, and I'm not going to explain it again. But clearly, you, you are as thick as a brick. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Uh, this is Ron on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. This is Ron from San Diego. Yes, sir. Hey, you're old enough. Maybe you could uh, inform me on something. When in the history of mankind did women become parasites? 
How so? Well, I, I I was told, you know, by my elder that there was a time back whenever women actually created a symbiotic relationship. They helped out the man. Now it seems like all they do is take your money, their your time. Yeah. Well, this uh, began. This began with this began with feminism, which would uh, put it in the late 1960s or early 1970s. And uh, what it means, in essence, is that uh, what women have done is they've gotten the laws changed so that divorce is in their favor, child custody is in their favor, vagina mode is in their favor. They've gotten the laws set up so a woman can have sex with your best friend right on your living room floor, right in front of your eyes, and then take you for everything you've got. Now, that's the fact. Yeah, I mean, because I'm a pretty easy going kind of guy, and... Uh, the last few women I've been with, I was even only asking for a couple things, like wait five minutes after I come home before you start bitching. And they couldn't even do that. Well, I have a zero-tolerance policy towards bitching, though. Zero tolerance. Yeah. Any, any any woman, if I date a woman who starts bitching, I'm giving her a knee to the groin, out the door, done. <laughs> done. I'm done. I'm done tolerating. I am done paying. I am done supporting, I am done listening, I am done tolerating. Done. What? I love your show. I better get off the phone before I end up crashing here on the freeway. I understand. More power to you, man. Thank you for that, Ron. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Rob on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. What's going on? This is Rob from San Diego. Hey, Rob. Hey, you know, I was watching that game on Saturday when Hernandez made those comments, and, you know, a couple innings later, he went a little further and said, okay, we've been getting some negative comments back, and I just want to say that uh, I apologize for offending anybody out there, but I stand by my comments. And, you know, I see his point. The, the point that I think he's making is when you're, in, you know, in a professional baseball game in the dugout, you don't want some hot trainer in there that are, you know, distracting the guys. It's a baseball game. You don't have girls in the dugout. She looks a little chunky in the photo I'm looking at here. I don't know how hot she is, but more importantly, uh, my understanding of a, of a baseball dugout, and I've known some ball players, is that uh, the language gets kind of salty in there. <laughs> And honestly speaking, if I'm a player, just like I don't like having any women in the studio when I'm working. If I'm a player, I don't want a chick standing around and my having to watch myself all the time. And I think that's the point. It just calls for a different behavior standard than there should be in a dugout during a baseball game when your focus is beating the hell out of the other team. No, no doubt about it. But uh, but you know but uh, again uh, you know uh, the, uh, the 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 record of the San Diego Padres over the last few years right? I am a lifelong Padres fan and San Diego native. So, yeah. so you are more than aware of uh, the so I don't know putting chicks in the dugout is going to solve any of those problems. Hey, anything that will help, you know. <laughs> you know, uh, frankly, if they put a chick in the dugout giving lap dances, that might improve things. Hell, I'll, I'll take up swinging the bat again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, one little bit of San Diego trivia. Um, in San Diego, bong loads are affectionately known as Buellers, with this combination of bong plus fuel. So I'm wondering if you will take them out with a Bueller, Tom. Here you go, Rob. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Uh, this is Jerry on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Father. Hi, son. How are you? Good. How you doing? I'm doing great. Good. I uh, kind of share a couple stories here about our local uh, commentator, Mark Grace here. Yes. Oh, uh, I don't know if you ever listened. For people who don't know, Mark Grace, uh, uh, one of the great first basemen of the last twenty years, played for the Chicago Cubs, finished his career with the Arizona Diamondbacks, and is now the color commentator for the Diamondbacks. Now, uh, you have to tune in, even though the Diamondbacks are one of the worst teams in the league, you almost have to tune in when you're here when uh, uh, here locally because you never know what this guy is going to say. Uh, in a local interview uh, a couple years ago, he was saying about, how, oh, when I was a player and I was mired in a 2-for-30 or a 2-for-40 slump, I would go down and nail a slump buster. He goes, out on the road, you go down to the lobby, and you find the fattest, gnarliest chick, and you lay the wood to her, and you're guaranteed to go three for five the next day. <laughs> I love that. Oh, yeah. And last year... Now, that's color commentary. 
That's color, and this is even more colorful. Last year, he's on the air, and uh, I guess you can mute your mic and, and say stuff to the crew or whatever, so it doesn't. I, I do, pal, I do it all the time. <laughs> okay. Now he's on the air. I'm watching a, uh, a broadcast. I can't remember if it was a year or two ago, but this guy's up uh, up in the plate, and he he's just. He couldn't hit anything, and, and he must have forgot to hit the mute button because, and I'll give you the G-rated version, but this is actually went out on air. This guy swings like an F and P. <laughs> it, it was the funniest thing I ever heard. He almost got fired over it, but, he was, you know, he, he was able to apologize. But, uh, yeah, that guy is great. If you could even somehow interview him about this maybe in the next week or two, and he will give you some color commentary that is... You guys wouldn't believe it. Well, you know, I'm going to be in Phoenix. Uh, we're arriving on Thursday. Maybe uh, are the Diamondbacks in town? Maybe we should try to get them on. Oh, that'd be great. You know, I don't know if they're uh, if they're here or not. They're on a road trip right now, but just see if you guys can uh, can uh, get them down there. That'd I'd love to have Mark Grace on. <laughs> Thanks. Can you take me out, Kobe style? Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Uh, yeah, the air I breathe. Uh, She's so special to me. Uh, uh, Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I've been out and about, and I've seen these crazy bumper stickers. I saw this one the other day that said, Driver carries no cash, he's married. Why does he just put a big bumper sticker that says, Hey, I'm a pussy, my wife's got my balls. I hadn't heard of that bumper sticker. <laughs> The Tom Likas Show. From Los Angeles, indeed, it's the Tom Likas Show. And, uh, my goodness... In three days, I will be in the studios of 101.5 Free FM in Phoenix. And I am assuming they've got all the gadgetry to uh, and the wizardry to send my voice back uh, here to Los Angeles as I am broadcasting. And uh, you may or may not know this. I, I, uh, I worked for three years uh, in Phoenix in the 80s doing afternoon drive. Not, not two miles from where I'll be broadcasting. <laughs> oh, this should be quite an experience going back to Phoenix, going back to the future. In fact, I think Back to the Future came out while I was working in Phoenix, if I recall correctly. But nonetheless, uh, there I'll be uh, at the mic uh, this Thursday from the studios of 101.5 Free FM. And then on Friday at McDuffie's in Tempe, that's going to be 5th and Ash. Friday, the show begins at 3 Arizona time. Doors open at 2 Arizona time, and uh, it's going to be quite the scene. And uh, if the photographs I'm receiving are any indication, there should be quite the crowd. You know, there are women in L.A. sending me photos. They want to fly over or drive over. I'm getting photos from L.A. chicks now. And uh, I've been telling uh, everybody, if you're a 9 or a 10 and you'd like to uh, get back door into the event, you won't have to wait in line or anything, send that photograph to Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The skimpier dress, the better. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Gary Zabransky will be up late at night analyzing these photographs. And he will uh, formulate a guest list. And then uh, if you're on that list, uh, you don't have to wait in line. You'll just come right in the back door with the rest of us. Come in the service entrance with the uh, staff of the Tom Likas show. With the staff of Tom Likas himself. That's right. I'll show you the back door. That is uh, this Friday at McDuffie's in Tempe. That's the corner of 5th and Ash, block west of Mill Avenue, right near ASU. And... Uh, if you need details, by, oh, by the way, everyone's asking how much it costs to get in. In fact, some morons are writing in and asking to be put on a guest list as if there's a cover charge or they want to get in for free. Nobody's being charged to get in. It's free. Remember, it's free FM. Get it? It's free. You don't have to pay. That's why there's going to be a big line because it's free. Stop calling Dean and ask him how much it costs to get in or where to get tickets. There are no tickets. You just go down to McDuffie's on Friday and you're in. That's it. It's free. 
you cheap bastard. Free. All right, so it's this Friday. Show starts at three, doors open at two. I wouldn't wait till three to get there. I'm not kidding. You can tell from the phone calls, and we can tell from the email. There's going to be a large crowd at three in the afternoon. I recommend getting there as early as you can. Stake out your space. And we will see what happens. So uh, we will see you on Friday at McDuffie's in Tempe. And in the meantime, ladies, uh, if you're a 9 or a 10 and you want to be guaranteed admission, send your photograph to Tom at blowmeuptom.com. We'll be analyzing those. We'll be burning the midnight oil, getting a good, close look at those. No doubt about it. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. We're talking about New York Mets announcer Keith Hernandez, former ball player, who... Uh, expressed discontent with uh, finding a woman in the San Diego Padres dugout. It was on the training staff. Let's say hello here to Tom on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Tom. Hello, Tom. How are you? Do you care? I do. I'm doing great. Good. You know, I have to say I totally agree with you on this one. I think that expressing an opinion like that is ridiculous. All right, no, I mean, shot down for expressing an opinion like that is ridiculous. I mean, I'm a, I'm a Christian, and I know that when I, when I hear jokes made about my faith, it doesn't offend me because it's their opinion, not mine. Yeah. And you notice uh, when women make comments about men, like, hey, turn on the view any morning of the week, and oh, see, oh, how many, see how many things they say that would be offensive to men. And there's no controversy about it at all. It's perfectly okay to say men are dogs, men are cretins, men are pigs. Uh, they just love saying it, and women love watching it. And everybody yeah, thinks it's like, perfectly okay. It's perfectly okay that, like, you know, the world's view of what a man is is nothing but a flannel wearing, you know, blue jeans wearing, like, beer spool and moron. Right. And there's no problem with that. But the minute that we say that sports are for men and they're not for women, oh, we're in trouble for that. Yeah, I know. That's, it's, a, it's a huge, it's a, it's a double standard. It's just ridiculous in this country. No doubt about it, Tom. It's Irene on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. I was calling because, first of all, I've listened to you since you started out here in Phoenix. And I just wanted to say that the commentator, I don't think he should have apologized. That's the way he feels, and he should say it. And I don't think that she should have gotten upset because it's his opinion. You can say whatever you want. That's why we're in America, right? Uh, yes, and you know, I'm just reading now on ESPN, Keith Hernandez has been reprimanded by the New York Mets. I think that's ridiculous. I think I think you could say whatever you want. Um, I think she shouldn't have gotten mad because regardless of what he says, she, she's going to be there no matter what he says. I am so tired of the vagination of sports. I'm so tired of it. You know, there's nothing that's for guys anymore. Nothing. How about something just for guys? Yeah, I agree with you. Even though I'm a woman and I listen to you all the time, I agree with a lot of what you say, Tom. And I just want to tell you that I love you. Thank you, Irene. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Marshall on the Tom Likas Show. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? Great. Good. First time, long time. Thank you. I just want to say I agree with most of the things you say, but on this one, I think I'm going to have to disagree on the business side of it, not the principal side of Why? it. Why? Well, my thinking is Major League Baseball is in it to make money. And the well, which, by the way, by the way, let me, I want to make a comparison here. So are we. Correct. And we have women who tune into this show. Just like the New York Mets have women tuning into their baseball games. But just like our radio show, women are not the target audience. They're not the prime audience. They're not what we call in the radio business the P1 audience, the loyalists. The primary audience. Women are not that. So what I'm saying is, are there advertisers who will never advertise on this show? Yeah. Don't be listening for Procter & Gamble anytime soon. Okay? <laughs> but uh, guess what? Procter & Gamble wouldn't advertise here anyway. We don't have enough women listening. Correct. I hear what you're saying. So, so why should we, or any baseball announcer, worry about offending people who are not in the target audience? Well, here's my thinking on it, and I, I agree with you. Men in that demographic are the primary audience, although women do go to baseball games. Women, look, women come to listener parties. Women right. listen to the child likes. Women call in. 
like Irene, who just called in. But they're not the primary audience. And in fact, the women who are listening are listening to hear it just the way it is. Right. I agree with you. I, I would liken that to if baseball went in the completely opposite direction and had women in bikinis giving out pretzels and beer, then I think they would actually make more money than the women that... I agree with you. And you know yeah. what? They should. I think that's the... Next I mean, ever go to a... Uh, by the way, you live in HB. Uh, you, you're in Orange County, right? Correct. Ever ever been to a Lakers game? Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, how about those Laker girls? <laughs> well, from my understanding, they were the ones that started it all, so... Well, uh, put it this way. Uh, they certainly are the ones that took it to a new level back in the 70s when they did that. Exactly. Uh, what's wrong with that? No, nothing. Yeah, no. The, the women who go, they're just going to have to live with the Laker girls. Tough luck. Exactly. You got to give Jerry Buss credit, man. You know what? All those years when it was everybody's being politically correct, Jerry Buss said, "F you," and the Laker girls continued. <laughs> Very true, and look where it got us. <laughs> <laughs> the team's worth half a billion dollars now. Exactly. So I don't know. I, I understand why baseball is going the way they are, but I think they need to take it to one of the two extremes. They don't have to take it to an extreme, but the point is, uh, you know what? The broadcasts are primarily for guys. If an announcer says something that might offend women, but the guys might get a chuckle out of, I don't think they should be worried about it at all. Tom. Oh, yeah. Like this. Tom. Like this. Like this. I wouldn't know how to give dating tips to date your aunt or your cousin. <laughs> Good. Because I don't need any. Good place to cruise for Poon, the next family reunion. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. And 1-800-5800-TOM. Now... Before I take this call, I have to give the usual disclaimer. Anybody can call a radio station and claim to be anybody. Because they're anonymous, you don't know if what they're about to say is true. So you have to take what anybody says when they call a radio talk show with a grain of salt. Okay? Sometimes people call it and make uh, allegations that um, are really not provable because we're standing here doing the show live. There's no time to check. So I'm about to put a call on the air where someone's about to make a statement about a famous person. And I want to say in advance, this may or may not be true, and you have to use your own judgment. I'm not going to prevent you from hearing what she has to say. I just want you to, uh, to, to be aware of that before I put the call on the air. Okay? This is Lisa. On the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Lisa. Yes. We're on the radio. Hi. Hi. How are you? Great. Yeah, it seemed like your show was kind of getting pretty boring, so I thought I'd liven it up a little bit. Oh, you think our show is boring? It was getting there right now. Hmm, really? Yeah. Amazing. I'm amazed you uh, tolerated it for this long. Yeah, well, you know... I see. So you're going to do us a big favor now and liven things up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By making an allegation about somebody. There's no allegation. Well, I yes. have a certificate and, and all that, proof that, of that. Yeah. Well, fine, but we can't see it, and so right now it's nothing but an allegation. Okay, yeah, you are correct on that. Yes, you are. Well, we are, we're running out of time for this hour, so you better get to it. Okay, listen. Right now, um, I am homeless. Um, Why are you homeless? Because Social Security has not done their paperwork. They're uh, 10 months. So, so you are 65 years old? No, I am disabled now. They said I have epilepsy. I see. How did you uh, find that out? How long right. have you known about it? Um, I was having seizures all day long, you know, like around one right after the other. What was day that. was that? Um, that was May of 2005 when it happened. Okay, so it's less than a year. Yeah, and they haven't finished their paperwork yet. So they said I couldn't drive and I couldn't work. Okay. And I had a really good job. So right. what do I do? How do I pay rent then? I really don't know. I think what you do then is you see an attorney is what you do. 
Well, I did. I seen an attorney. And, and what did the attorney tell you to do? The, t the attorney said um, uh, there's still more paperwork that needs to be done, and if they don't respond by this time, then I'll take it over, is what he said. Okay. In other words, he told me to continue doing what I'm doing. Oh, I, I got 40 seconds. Okay. Listen, my, I'm related to Armand Killebrew. From what I know... Armand Killebrew, the former baseball player. Yes. And, um... I've been trying to get a hold of him, like, through the Internet or some way or another, and I haven't been able to, and you were talking about baseball, so I thought, well, maybe you can connect me somehow. I know you know. This is supposed to spice up my show. I'm supposed to help you get through to Harmon Killebrew. Yes. And what, do you expect, you know what do you expect him to do? Well, I expect him to maybe, um, for one, uh, Epilepsy Foundation is not one of the, the community foundations that he... Uh, right. Well, we're running out of time here, dear. Sorry. The Tom Likas Show.